If you do collage, you're probably familiar with using magazine clippings in your work. In today's video, I'm going to talk about where you can find magazines and some examples of how you can use them in your collages. There are lots of reasons why magazine clippings are great for collage. First of all, magazines are pretty easy to find and they're not that expensive if you are looking to get a specific magazine um, in a bookstore, for example. If you can find used magazines or magazines that people no longer want, that's even better, of course. My local library keeps used secondhand magazines where you can bring magazines that you have in and exchange them and get other, pick up other magazines that are interesting to you. That's something that I utilize quite a lot. And if you really want, you can also buy used magazines. You can buy them on eBay, for example. You can buy a stack of three or four or five magazines from a particular publisher that you really like. If you know that you're going to use them in collage work, then it's absolutely worth it what it costs to have them shipped to you, especially if you want to get a bunch of this of a similar kind of magazine all at once. There are certain magazines that I like to use. For example, I came across a bunch of old Victoria magazines just from the 1990s, so not quite that old. But they have really beautiful images that I like. Um, a lot of um, English countryside or fancy teapots, uh, things like that, that I know that I, would, I could use in some of my collage. The other kind of magazine clippings I like to use are those that come from travel brochure catalogs. Um, there are some cruise liners that put out catalogs for um, the cruises that they offer and their photos they use of exotic locations are really well done and beautiful. So I like to cut those out and then hold on to them and use them for using in my different kinds of glue books. Magazines are considered disposable. They are recyclable and so it's such a great thing to be able to get a stack of magazines and to go through them, to, to sit down in front of TV or whatever, cut out pictures, cut out images that you love and set them aside for future use. Then you can throw out the rest of the magazine and not feel guilty about throwing something out that's valuable. One concern people may have regarding magazine clippings is that sometimes they do have a particular shine to the paper. If you are combining magazines with other kinds of paper, maybe that shine can be distracting. So in that case, you can use a little bit of matte medium over the top, applied with a brush or even with, with your fingertip, and that will take away that glossiness. I like to use magazine clippings in my glue books, and I have two examples to show you with how I use them. In this first example, I have a book that I made using a bunch of envelopes from some mail art, along with other kinds of papers from textbooks and things like that. So I've got one magazine piece here, and this is a napkin uh, used along with it. I used all different kinds of papers. I used receipts, sometimes even just scrap papers left over from other projects. So here is a magazine clipping I used and on top, uh, it's on top. Underneath is some kind of textured paper. Um, I'm not quite sure where that came from. Then I just have a piece of washi tape and a rubber stamping. Here is a magazine clipping, and it does have a shine to it, but I don't mind. It doesn't bother me to have that shine. Here's another magazine clipping. I love architecture and buildings, and I was looking for something that had this brown theme to it, and these buildings just worked perfectly. So it goes very nicely with uh, book text. 
Here's another magazine clipping. I think this was from one of those travel brochures. Um, it's just an interesting thing to look at. Here's a couple more. Here's a pretty clipping from an order catalog. I think this was probably for this desk. Uh, I liked the image, so I cut it out and it goes very nicely with the background of this envelope. And it just kind of, you know, works with this as well. This is from a Better Homes and Gardens magazine. Here are some storefronts, again, kind of architectural design. This is on a little envelope that's used in this junk journal. This is from a catalog, <laughs> probably some samples for carpets, for rugs. Here's a cute little clipping that I used and it looks really nice set against this. This magazine clipping is sitting in a just a piece of a brochure that I used along with my other papers. So you can just see I have them sprinkled throughout this junk journal. Here's the other half of that envelope. And it's kind of neat how I've got these two faces right here. In my second example, I have kind of a catch-all glue book. In these glue books, it's a lot of fun to be able to just turn to a page and glue something in it without having a whole lot of planning done first. This is really freeing and it's such a great project that when, for example, you're traveling or you're short on time, you don't have a lot of time to prepare for, for creating big art projects, it's really fun to just glue things into a glue book. And when you have these pictures, these magazine clippings, you can add them in quite quickly with other scraps of paper. So this is a brochure for this ocean liner. And inside are um, very nice pictures of different places across the world. There's Venice, someplace in Italy, Istanbul, right, you get the idea. Portofino, Lisbon. So if you cut these out and use them, set them aside, you can use them in all kinds of projects. And what I usually do is I will take like a long strip this way, or you could even cut something out this way. There's also little maps um, if you're interested, and they have some smaller images on the sides as well that it can be, can be nice to use. So how I use them is I have this I guess it's a junk journal. Yeah, it's a junk journal made from uh, papers, like just scrap papers. Uh, and actually, I use a lot of magazine pages inside of them. And once I have them inside, I add even more magazine pages on top. I use other kinds of papers too. Sometimes I use book pages. I basically throw in any kind of paper that I can that is easily accessible, but magazine pa pages is the, is the biggest or the one that I use the most. And sometimes I use pages from catalogs. So if I have like a jewelry catalog um, or not necessarily a clothing catalog, but other kinds of catalogs I'll use images from. This was from a catalog that sold art, and I just cut out the little tiny pieces of art and then use them in here. So let me show you the examples I have. So here is um, something from a catalog, just, oh, 
there are my dogs, sorry about that. Um, this is a lamp from a catalog, just a pretty lamp. And I have it on this sewing page, just with a piece of ribbon that goes with the lamp, right? And then over here, I have that one of those travel pictures and another one of the travel pictures over here next to an image of a map. Here, I have this piece of paper that I used as a wear somewhere I cleaned off my rubber stamps and also, also as a foundation for, for using with a um, stencil. And when I put it inside the book, I didn't really have a plan for it, but then I found this magazine image again from the travel one um, with these yellow hues that just match really nicely with my the page opposite. This, here's again another magazine thing, um, not, not a magazine, catalog, another catalog, order catalog. More travel stuff. And I, you know, I have them put in sideways or whatever, which, whatever way fits. Here's from a catalog, a jewelry catalog, and I had a piece of washi tape that um, I just put along the side of it to decorate. And here, this was the back side of that Ghirardelli um, candy bag. And the gold just kind of works really well with the gold uh, hues at the top of that picture. There's more, again, jewelry catalog. Um, I really, and this is just a full, you know, ma a magazine page. And then this jewelry catalog piece is glued on top of it. So it's kind of just layers, layers and layers. So that is how I use magazine images in these kinds of glue books. Right, so what about storage? How do you store magazine clippings? Well, there's all kinds of ways, of course. Um, you can put them in um, page protectors, you can put them in envelopes, you can separate them according to theme or to color. It's really entirely up to you. Uh, I tend to have a lot of loose magazine clippings just in a jumble because um, sometimes what I'm creating, I don't necessarily know what I'm looking for and it's kind of good to have a chaotic mess of of images, uh, that's kind of my preference. So it's definitely a personal choice of how you want to catalog or to store or, you know, just, just keep them in a bunch somewhere, a stack in an envelope. It's entirely up to you. If you use magazines in your collage, I'd love to know which ones you particularly like to use. Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.